Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, we are going to try something a little different. We are going to create a quiz using JavaScript and HTML. As usual, all of these projects can be found on my GitHub page, so download the project if you would like to follow along. Open the project and let's first take a look at the HTML file. A basic HTML file has a head and a body. JavaScript is usually placed at the end of the body tag. This gives the HTML a chance to load. On line 13, we have a link to our JavaScript file. It is called script.js. This tutorial makes use of a two-dimensional array which holds our questions and answers. In this tutorial, I will be using Sublime Text as my text editor, but feel free to use other text editors such as Atom or Brackets. Open script.js and let's start adding the questions to our quiz. Each question item is going to be contained in an array. This array will contain an integer which represents the question number a string which represents the question and another string to hold the answer. In this quiz, you will be learning something about my country because the questions will be based on Barbadian history. However, for this tutorial, I will only be using five questions. We will use variables to hold the answer and another variable to convert the user's response to lower case. This is done because the user may choose to type the response in all uppercase or capitalize the first letter of each word. We will use the prompt method to ask the question and store the response in the variable answer. Then we will convert the string stored in answer to all lowercase letters and store it in a variable named response. The first question item in the quiz is going to be at position 0 in the quiz array, and the actual question is going to be at position 1. You can access elements in, a, in an array by referring to the index number. Since this is a two-dimensional array, there will be two indices. It is a good practice to build in small steps and tests. At this point, I want to see if my prompt is going to run. So save the file and open the index.html file and run the web page. If you see the prompt, that means your code is working. Back in the editor, let's convert the answer and store it in the variable response. We will use a conditional statement to check if the user's response is equal to the answer which is at index 2 in our question item array. If it is there, we are going to write to the web page using the document.write method. Usually, when we are writing a string to the web page, we use double quotes or single quotes, but in this case, I am using the backstick character, which is usually found in the upper left corner next to the number 1 key. This allows me to use string interpolation. If I want to use the content of a variable, I would use the dollar sign and two curly braces. My variable name goes between the two curly braces. The question number is at index zero. When we call document.write, it will write to the page that you got question one correct. If it is wrong, then it will write that you got question 1 wrong. So let's test this app. You will notice that I have the dev developer tools open and this allows me to check for errors. Now that the code works, we need to find a way to cycle through all the questions in the array. This can be done using a for loop. So we can cut and paste the code that we just wrote and place it inside a for loop. For loops allow us to run the code over and over again 
with a different value. Var i in the for loop is like a counter. We start the counter at zero. We want our loop to run for each item in our array, so we set the counter to quiz.length, which in this case is equal to five. And we increase the counter by one each time. So our code will run using the first item in our array, then it will run to the second item and so on. Now let's test our quiz. You'll notice that the code seems to be stuck on the first question. The way a for loop works is that it runs a block of code, increases the counter value, runs the code again with a different value, and then it stops when the counter reaches its maximum value. Let's change the first index in our for loop to i and see what happens. Remember, this refers to the position of each question item. Great, our code works. And that is how you build a quiz using JavaScript and HTML. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. You can subscribe to my channel to see more coding videos. And as always, thanks for watching.